Marketers have become obsessed with personalization. People ask, how can I get more customer data? How can I use it in my campaigns? But do they think enough about what data they should be getting in the first place? In this episode of Marketing is Broken, we look at why brand emotion is the real secret to getting a positive personalization payoff. Stick around to find out why. Welcome to Marketing is Broken, where bad marketing doesn't make us cry, it makes you cry. Let's go to the news. This week, we found an interesting story from Entrepreneur by Christine Alemani, the CEO of Trailblaze Growth Advisors. In her article entitled, Smart Brands Won't Generalize When It Comes to Gen Z, Alemani describes how industry heavyweights like Target and Papa John's are worried about becoming obsolete with consumers under 25 and why personalized marketing experiences might be an effective way to respond. She goes on to add that the trend towards personalization is being financed by a flood of marketing dollars, many of which simply won't pay off for a few reasons. First, companies will personalize efforts with the wrong technology and in the wrong marketing channels. Number two, brands won't share the values needed to make a genuine connection with consumers. And number three, brands will focus way too much on marketing messages and not enough on truly understanding the messages that connect best with consumers. It'll be interesting to see exactly how many marketing dollars will be wasted as the industry continues to tinker with personalization in the years to come. And the bigger question I have is, is this about personalization or simply about being more personable as a brand? That brings us to this week's topic. Today, personalization is coveted as a panacea for marketers, but how do you make sure you're getting the most return on your investment in this growing space? First, let's talk about the technology. Forget about the technology. Seriously, too many companies start and end their personalization efforts with the latest tool and end up looking like one when it fails to pay off. Always start with the strategy. And when it comes to personalization, the best strategies will usually involve getting personable with consumers because this allows you to understand the actual motivations, values, and needs of the consumer well enough to make personalization work for you. Like Alamani says in her Entrepreneur article, it's important for brands to A, share the same values with customers, and B, be able to communicate those values effectively instead of focusing on their own marketing messages. But how do you do that exactly? It starts with asking consumers. Here are three questions you should ask your consumers, either in person, through email, or by running a survey if you want your personalization strategy to pay off. First, ask consumers what traits they look for when buying a product or service in your category. Include functional aspects like price, features, and customer service, but then include some intangibles too, like saving time, convenience, and any value props you see the competition bragging about. Number two, Ask customers to rate a list of values that the companies in the category should support if they want to make the world a better place. This question helps to determine the aspirational qualities a brand should strive for, in addition to simply selling the product that has all of the appropriate features and benefits. When you ask consumers to rate a list of values, you make them pick the one or two emotions that matter most to them. And knowing this information makes it so much easier to launch personalization efforts that resonate with customers. And lastly, Ask your customers how your brand makes them feel. For best results, ask the question in an open-ended format. And then, responses can be classified by sentiment and categorized for meaning, which helps marketers gain an even better understanding of how consumers see their brand. After you do this, double down on the things that people love about your brand and address the issues that lead customers feeling like they've been catfished. Dollar for dollar, getting your customers' answers to these three questions is probably the best investment that you can make in marketing personalization because it helps you get that much closer to the type of personalization experiences consumers are hungry for today. At the end of the day, if you know how your customers want to be served and then you reach out and offer them that thing, it's gonna seem incredibly personalized and thoughtful, whether that email contains the person's first name or not. What do you think? Are you investing more in the next year on personalization tools, the data needed to personalize campaigns, or a bit of both? And how does brand emotion play into your personalization? Share your comments below and you may end up with some new Brandish Insights gear. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Marketing is Broken, brought to you by Brandish Insights, the world's first brand analytics platform. We're like Google Analytics for brands. Catch this weekly show by subscribing to our YouTube channel or by visiting brandishinsights.com to learn more. Broughton.